Hi, I am Stephen Hadhazi, and I am here for LaborYield.com. If you do not know what a labor yield is, or if you are not familiar with how LaborYield.com works, then keep watching. The property insurance claims industry has long depended on unit cost pricing for the creation of property damage estimates. For example, if someone had damage to the drywall in their living room, the insurance adjuster could merely measure the square footage of the damaged area and create an estimate based on how many square feet of drywall was damaged. The adjuster would already have a per square foot unit cost for the drywall replacement in his property loss estimating software. The unit cost for drywall would contain both labor and materials. The material cost is easy enough to calculate as you can merely go online to any big box material supplier such as Home Depot and check the price for a sheet of drywall. You then only have to divide the square footage contained in the sheet by the cost of the entire sheet and bingo, you have your unit cost per square foot for the drywall material. You would need to do the same for any other components associated with the replacement of drywall such as drywall screws. Now you have to figure out how much the labor will cost per square foot. You could watch someone do the work and time them, but how do you prove the results to an entity such as an insurance company, mediator, or umpire? Also, was the work area free from any factors that could be used to argue against your results? For instance, corners or cutouts such as windows, doors, or even air conditioning or electrical outlets. A unit cost defined is an all-inclusive cost for performing a specific task. So for example, if you were developing a unit cost for roof shingles, you could not very well include roof vents or valley metal because some roofs do not even have vents or valleys. You cannot have anything in a unit cost that might vary from job to job. Labor yields are no different. When we develop a labor yield, we make every effort to exclude from the task anything that may make one job easier or another more difficult. Let's do a quick hypothetical example of how a labor yield is formed and then how we might arrive at a total unit cost for labor. A 10 foot high by 20 foot long wall would total to an area of 200 square feet. If the laborer took two hours to install the 200 square feet of insulation, then his labor yield would be 100 square feet per hour. If you wanted to take it further and develop the per square foot unit cost for the labor to install insulation, then you could take the labor rate for the installation installer, let's make up a round number, say $50 per hour, and divide it by the number of square feet that he was able to install in one hour, in this case 100 square feet. This would give you a labor unit cost of 50 cents per square foot for insulation. If you then wanted to take it further, you could add in the unit cost for the material such as staples and the insulation itself and come up with a complete unit cost for the installation of bat wall insulation. When we developed the labor yield for the installation of half inch drywall, we did it on a straight wall that was 55 foot long and 16 feet high. There were no cutouts for doors, windows, or any other obstructions of any kind. What we ended up with were two labor yields. One for drywall installation up to a height of 8 feet and another for drywall installation from an 8 foot height to a 16 foot height. Right now, many of you are thinking, well, that's great, but in the real world, homes have corners and cutouts and ceilings. <laughs> you could not be more correct, and we will account for every foot of them. As there is no way to know how many corners or cutouts a room may have, we cannot include them in the labor yield for the installation of the drywall itself. 
However, we can create a separate labor yield specifically for making cuts and holes in drywall. In an effort to document our labor yields, we film every moment that the staff are working. If one of the workers in a crew being filmed needs to take a break, then all of the workers must also stop working. The film is cut at the moment that the workers stop and the filming commences again the moment that the workers all simultaneously begin working again. All of the materials that the workers require are already on the job site and within the reach of the workers being filmed. Again, you are probably thinking in the real world, the contractors have to go and buy the materials and unload them at the job site, set up their work areas, bring material in and trash out. You could not be more correct. Yet again, however, those items are impossible to accurately be tracked and added into the labor yield for drywall installation. We will account for items such as making runs to the store or hauling materials in and trash out of a work area and even the necessary breaks for the workers but it will need to be addressed in a separate unit cost. Lastly, let's have a look at the sheer power that a well-done video gives us in the development of a labor yield. Here is a clip of our workers installing half-inch drywall and then taping and floating it up to an eight-foot hike. The workers are not moving at a slow, or a rapid pace. They are moving at an average pace. The workers could stay at this pace all day with the appropriate breaks. I think that you will agree that the pace at which the workers are moving is steady and likely to yield a fair and reasonable amount of work completed for their employer. However, there might be some entities such as insurance carriers which would dispute the amount of yield our laborers are netting. They might say things like, we have contractors that can yield twice that amount of drywall work in an hour. Our answer, fine. Let's speed up the footage 200%, which would double their labor yield. Take a look at this short video clip to see just how fast those laborers would have to be moving to yield 200%. Tell me, does that video appear to portray the speed which an average worker could maintain for an eight hour day or even eight minutes? Perhaps the insurance carrier told you that their people could do it 50% faster. Fine let's increase the speed of the original footage by 50 percent and see the result. As you can see, even at 50 percent in speed over the original video, the pace at which the laborers would be working would clearly be absurd, even to an insurance claims manager. Maybe not. This is the power that we at LaborYield.com are making available to you. Many of you already use insurance loss construction estimating software that contains labor and material unit costs. I have personally contacted some of these software companies to ask them where they had obtained their labor yields. I was surprised to find out that the people in their pricing departments did not know where they had obtained their labor yields. One of them suggested that they may have come from some book many years ago. Just to give you an idea of how far out of whack the labor yields are in some of the estimating software utilized by the insurance industry, our labor yield for hanging, taping, and floating half-inch drywall is around 48 square feet per hour, and a leading software package is at around 90. To perform this fast, the workers have to be moving at almost double the speed in which they moved 
in our video. Let's take a look at how fast they want your people to move for eight hours a day, just to save themselves a little money on their claim payouts. It may behoove you and your clients to replace the labor yields contained in your current construction estimating software with the proven labor yields from laboryield.com.